Hello, and welcome to beautiful Johnson Lake here in Banff National Park. My name is Dave Verhulst, and I'm the Fire Communications Officer here in Banff. Today, we've got a spectacular day to go for a hike along the shores of this lake and explore some of the forests and the stories they have to tell. Are you ready? Let's go. Forests are the kind of thing that are really easy to take for granted, especially living in a place like Banff, where we're literally surrounded by them. But forests do a lot of things for us. They clean our water, they clean our air. They're home to millions of birds and animals and people too. Within Parks Canada, we're particularly interested in the health of our forests. As we've researched the health of these forests over the years, we've found that the tool that is the most powerful for ensuring that they're healthy into the future is fire. Now you know Smokey the Bear. Given what Smokey's told us about fire, that might not make a lot of sense, but I think it will soon. Come on. From here, we get a great view of the Bow Valley. Have a look to the west and to the east. It's an incredible carpet of green as far as the eye can see and it fits most people's images of what a healthy forest should be. But what is a healthy forest? If you were to ask that question to forest researchers, the word they would choose to define forest health is diversity. Diversity in the species of trees, diversity in the ages of the trees, and diversity in the shrubs and the flowers and the forbs and grasses that are growing on the forest floor. So how diverse are our forests here in Banff? Let's go have a closer look. This is what many of the forests in Banff National Park look like. So how diverse is it? Let's have a look. Down here, we've got a little couple blades of grass that are trying to grow. There's a little wild rose that's just poking through the pine needles. And there's a pale looking wild strawberry uh, just right here. But really, there's not a lot of diversity on the forest floor. If you were an elk or a deer looking for some grasses to eat, this wouldn't be a good place for you to be. So let's look at the next layer. Do we have many shrubs to see? Well, a little bit over here maybe, but not a lot. And the trees themselves, we've got a couple of different kinds of trees in here. We've got a spruce tree over here. And just over here, we've got a few lodgepole pine trees. And really, those are the only two kinds of trees that you'll see in this forest. So how can you tell how old some of these trees are? Well, an easy way to tell how old a tree is is to look at how big it is around. So in this case, if we look at this lodgepole pine tree, I can take my hand and I can almost fit two hands around this tree. Believe it or not, this tree is probably about 70 years old. Things tend to grow fairly slowly here in the Rockies. If we look over in this tree over here, another lodgepole pine, just do a quick measurement here. And it's about the same size. If we pan out and have a look around, see the rest of the trees here, there really isn't much more difference in ages in trees. So it's really lacking that diversity in, in ages as well as species. So how do you get a young lodgepole pine and why aren't there any growing here on the forest floor? Well, one of the reasons is, is that these trees love sunshine. And if you look up here, you can see that we don't have a lot of sunshine coming down to the forest floor. And that's part of the reason why we're not getting a lot of things growing on the forest floor too. The lodgepole pine produces seeds in its cones. Encased in these cones are hundreds and hundreds of seeds. But opening these cones is a bit of a mystery. They're pretty tight and they're pretty hard. So I brought along a nutcracker just to see if we could crack it open and have a look. Okay, well I'm squeezing this pretty hard. Got both hands on it. I'm not sure I know very many animals that carry nutcrackers with them to release these seeds, but I'm not having a lot of luck here. One of the reasons why these seed these cones are so hard to open is because they're sealed with a resin. They're called a serotonous cone. 
The lodgepole pine has evolved with fire, and it takes temperatures of 45 degrees Celsius or more to open this cone. And if you talk to people that work on the fire line, they'll say that when a fire is burning through a pine forest like this, it's like there's seeds raining down on them from all of the lodgepole cones that are releasing their seeds. The other thing that fire does for lodgepole pine is it opens up the canopy. So you have the seeds being released at exactly the same time you've got more sun being able to reach the forest floor. And that's how these trees survive into the future. Now I don't want to give you the impression that these older spruce and pine forests are unimportant. Because for red squirrels and for chickadees and for nuthatches, this is really important habitat. This is where they get their food. But when all of the forests or the majority of the forests in the park look like this, it's cause for concern. Thank you.